Welcome. My name is Ronnie, lead engineer and official voice of the High Rise City project. Our analysis of the data collected worldwide has shown that you are the best person for the new position of project manager. Your vast experience in strategy is unparalleled. Many different projects focusing on planning, simulation and economics are listed in your portfolio. There is a lot at stake here. Our first attempts were difficult, so embrace the opportunity. But before you jump into action, here are a few hints about the special characteristics in High Rise City. Let's start with something simple. You can move your HUD screens by clicking and just moving them with the mouse. Now let's get used to the basic controls. You can move your camera easily with W, S, A and D or with the arrow keys. To rotate the camera, you can either press Q and E or hold the middle mouse button. To zoom, spin the mouse wheel. Good, now let's move on. In the left upper corner, you can see your current balance and below you can see if you're making profit or if you're losing money. And by the way, if you ever run short of money, remember you can also take out a loan. Next to this, you'll find the number of your inhabitants and the info if they are leaving your city or if they are moving to your city. Here you can see the resources. To build buildings, you need both money and materials. As you play the game, more resources will become available. All right, now let's build something. Let's start with some streets. If you move the mouse to the bottom of the screen, the building menu appears. Citizens decide to build houses based on external influences. In higher rank zones, skyscrapers of up to several hundred meters may be created. However, this takes time. Time you can speed up on the top left in your HUD. After the first flats have been built, a symbol appears above the buildings. It signals that this building has problems. Details about the building can be found in the building menu. Here you can see what is missing to satisfy the people living there. Here you can see wind turbines can be placed anywhere in the city. They don't need roads nearby. They will supply the buildings with power anyway, so just place them where you would like to have them. In order for the electricity to reach your city, we need a substation. It will carry the electricity from your wind. Most buildings also need water. Water towers produce water, but they also need it. Under your mouse, you see a white water node. Each building which is producing water also has such a node. 
Click on the one from the water tower to have a starting point. Game saved. Now, draw your pipes. By the way, unconnected nodes will appear red. Your city produces garbage, and that can cause serious issues. So you should take care of that. Garbage carriers can pick it up. Garbage zones must be placed so garbage can be stored. The doctor can take care of a defined zone you can see as a circle. Later on in the game, additional services will be required. Finally, we will cover the consumer goods. Fish is one of the most fundamental foods, and they can be acquired by a fishery. Those have to be placed near water and require road access. To build a farm, you need to define an area with surrounding streets. The roads must be a closed system. Existing roads can also be used.
Game saved. Build the shipping company next to a road. They also have a certain action radius. Within that radius, goods are collected. If the radius is too big, it takes much longer to pick up the goods. Let us go back to an apartment, so we can see the difference in satisfaction now that we fixed most of the issues. You can see here which goods or food they need. Some goods have a higher impact on their satisfaction. Once selected, you can see the range of the building displayed as a circle. The productivity is also displayed. And yes, the lumberjack yard also needs access to a road to function. Here you can see the status of the building. How many raw materials are in the building's storage, how high the operating costs are, what problems the building might have, the construction progress, and much more. Make sure the lumberjack yard is within the reach of your carrier, or place another carrier closer to it in order to keep travel times as low as possible. Now that you are producing wood, it is time to process them into planks. For this procedure, you will need to build a sawmill. Note, place the sawmill within reach of a carrier. Insulation material is another important resource for your city. It is farmed the same way as your vegetables. Mark out an area using roads. This area will become your farm. Now make sure the farm building is connected to your road network and in reach of a carry. Industrial buildings require offices to function. Offices don't have to be next to any specific building. However, they still require a road to be close by. Building offices is one of the best ways to generate money. Too much is better than not enough. The construction of such custom buildings also costs money and resources. This menu gives a good overview about the resources. To expand the capacity of your city, you will need to build warehouses. The town hall is an important building. 
After you've Game placed saved. it, you can see revenues and other statistics about your town in detail. Here you can see how the balance is calculated. Thank you for playing High Rise City. We hope you enjoyed what you have seen so far. In a not so distant future, a large part of humanity lives in cities and the infrastructure can hardly keep up with the ever-growing number of people. Roads are clogged, there is not enough housing and basic services are at risk. It was at this time that the High Rise City HRC research project was launched with the goal of building new cities as quickly as possible to combat overpopulation. The project was led by an international team of engineers, architects, politicians, philosophers, farmers and urban planners.